I'm delighted to be with you here tonight. On November 2nd, the Washington National Opera will open a production of Mozart's The Magic Flute. It's the last opera he wrote, and it's something very special. It's a blend of fairy tale and vaudeville comedy, and a very serious meditation on love and friendship that's informed by the ideals of the Masonic Lodge that Mozart and his librettist Schikaneder belonged to. Our production is something really special too because it's designed by the beloved author and illustrator Maurice Sendak, who's best known perhaps for his children's books like Where the Wild Things Are and In the Night Kitchen. Uh, it's a wonderful blend of seriousness and whimsy for all ages. And tonight, with the help of the Domingo Cafres Young Artists, we're going to give you a sample of the truly miraculous music that Mozart wrote for this piece. Now, when the show opens, we find a prince lost in a strange land, and to make matters worse, he's being chased by a dragon. And the dragon is just about to pounce on him, and he faints dead away. When he wakes up, the dragon is dead, and it's been replaced by a very strange character. It is a man dressed like a bird uh, running around with a set of panpipes. Now, this is normal for him. This is the outfit he wears for work. Because his name, his name is Papageno, and he is a bird catcher by trade. Uh, and he's very good at catching birds. What he really wants to do, however, is find love. Let him tell you about it. Uh, here's Samson McCready to sing Papageno's first aria from Mozart's The Magic Flute. I spend my life in grove and glade, and young and old throughout this land are always glad to shake my hand. For lovely birds, my snares I set, I pipe them down within my net. My life is cheerful, gay, and free, for all the birds belong to me. I spend my life in grove and glade, and young and old in every place are always glad to see my face. I wish that pretty girls would fly like birds to me as I pass by. Oh, how delightful that would be, a flock of girls surrounding me. Just one girl would fly to me, how happy she and I would be. With sugar plums I line my nest to please the girl that I like best. And if she'll kiss me tenderly, I'll ask her if she'll marry me. And how I love my dear young wife, I'll nest beside her all my life. So, when the prince, whose name is Tamino, wakes up from his faint and finds Papageno there and the dragon dead, he assumes that Papageno killed the dragon, and Papageno is flattered and is ready to take credit for it. Except that three ladies with spears show up. They are servants of the Queen of the Night, who rules this land, and they are there to inform Tamino that they killed the dragon, and that they killed it for a reason. They saved him for a reason, and the reason is uh, 
that the queen has a daughter and her name is Pamina and Pamina has been abducted by a priest named Zoroaster and the queen thinks Tamina would be just the guy to get her back and the ladies give Tamino a portrait of Pamina and he falls instantaneously in love. Uh, for his trouble, by the way, they also give Papageno a golden padlock to shut his mouth since he's been telling lies about how brave he is. <laughs> to sing Tamino's aria from the first act of the Magic Flute, please welcome tenor Joshua Blue. Well, the three ladies come back and they decide to have mercy on Papageno and unpadlock his mouth on one condition and that condition is that he go with Tamino to rescue Pamina from Zarastra's castle. Papageno is not enthusiastic. Papageno is sure that he's going to end up plucked and roasted at Zarastra's castle and maybe fed to the dogs. But he's mollified someplace, somewhat because the three ladies give Tamino and Papageno some magic instruments to help them on their way. To Tamino, they give 
a magic flute that can tame wild beasts and bring harmony into all the hearts that hear it. And to Papageno, they give a set of magic bells. And to guide the two of them on their way, they introduce them to three spirits, three child spirits who will guide them to Zoroaster's castle. And if they, they say, if you take their counsel, you'll never go astray. So in addition to Tamino and Papageno, please welcome now the queen's three ladies, Alexandria Shiner, uh, Amanda Lynn Bottoms, and Rihanna Thelwell. Tell us, pray. Oh, be our guide and show the way. Oh, 
In the event, the first one to find Pamina isn't Tamino, it's Papageno. And he tells her that Tamino is in love with her and she is thrilled to know that someone loves her. And Papageno feels a little self-conscious because, again, he hasn't found someone to love him. And Pam Pamina takes him in hand like a sister and tells him that surely heaven will take pity on him because he has a tender heart. And sooner or later, heaven will bring him the Papagena that he deserves here to sing the duet of Pamina and Papageno from Act One of The Magic Flute are Samson McCready's Papageno and now for the first time, Pamina Marlene Nahas. At the piano, by the way, Thomas Morris.
So Pamina and Papageno attempt to escape from Zoroastro's castle. They are, alas, not successful. In fact, not only they, but Tamino uh, as well, they're all caught and brought before Zoroastro. Now, very often in the story of a quest, it turns out midway through the quest that the quest is not what you thought it was going to be, that the people you thought were your enemies may be your friends. The people who you thought were your friends may not be your friends so much, and the goals you thought you were setting out to accomplish might not be the goals that you're meant to accomplish. That's exactly the kind of shift that happens at this point in the opera, because when they get brought before Zoroastro, it turns out that Zoroastro is not the evil fiend that he was painted as by the queen's three ladies. In fact, he is the head priest of a temple that's devoted to uh, wisdom, and labor, and arts, and brotherhood. And he acknowledges that the gods intend for Pamina and Tamino to be together. But he says Tamino must first prove himself worthy. He must join their brotherhood, and he must undergo all their trials. And Tamino is convinced. And he and Papageno uh, are set to begin the trials. Papageno, as you can imagine, less enthusiastically than Tamino. The first trial is a vow of silence, uh, which Tamino has a lot easier time with than Papageno, especially when the three ladies come back to ask them why they are spending their time in this dreadful place and why they've been sucked in by Zarastro and have they forgotten what the queen told them to do? Here's the second act quintet, uh, which in the English is titled, Why, Why, Why? Uh, featuring the three ladies, Tamino and Papageno.
while Tamino and Papageno are undergoing the trial of silen silence, Pamina is undergoing her own trials of a very different sort. First of all, Zoroastro has a servant, a guy by the name of Monostatos, who is desperately in love with Pamina and is willing to try everything to get close to her in order, including sneaking up on her while she's asleep to kiss her. She's saved from Monostatos, only to find herself confronted by her mother. And it turns out when her mother, the queen of the night, shows up, that she is not so interested in getting her daughter back. What she really wants is this magical amulet that Zarastro has, the sevenfold circle of the sun. And she gives Pamina a dagger, and she orders her to kill Zarastro and get that circle. And Pamina can't bring herself to do it. Uh, when she's actually confronted with Zoroastro, and Zoroastro forgives her, and forgives her mother, and he tells her that in this temple, when those, uh, when people err, they're brought gently back to the right way, and revenge is quite unknown. So we're going to hear three arias in a row, first from tenor Matt Pierce, the aria of Monostatos, then from uh, soprano uh, Alexandra Novakovsky, the second aria of the Queen of the Night, the famous one called Der Hölle Rache, or the Wrath of Hell. Uh, and then uh, from bass Will Minert, the second aria of Zarastra. snuggle, hug, and kiss. Just because I'm gross and ugly, I'm denied a hope of bliss. I'm denied a hope of bliss. In my breast, a heart is beating. I have flesh and blood as well. I have flesh and blood as well. Life without love's consolations would be worse than burning hell. Would be worse than burning hell. Would be worse than burning hell. To snuggle, hug, and kiss, and have delight. Shining moon, if this is wrong, then tell me why it feels so right. Tell me why it feels so right. She is fair. I need to kiss her. Moon, you dare to play the spy. Moon, you dare to play the spy. If you find it all too shocking, just you shut your shining eye, just you shut your shining eye, just you shut your shining eye. Oh, <laughs> 
It's marvelous how Mozart works it out in the show so you can hear the highest possible voice and the lowest possible voice right next to each other. So after all those trials, you would think Pamina would be done, but no. She hears Tamino playing the magic flute and she comes running to meet him. Remember, Tamino is still under a vow of silence. He can't talk to her. And she doesn't know what to make of it. And she's convinced that he must no longer love her. And if he no longer loves her and she no longer has a future with him, she sees no future for herself. 
the aria that she sings, the famous aria, is called in German, Ach, ich fühls, or Ah, I feel, my life is over. Here to sing it for you is Marlene Nahas. So, Pamina finds herself in a desperate situation, and for Tomino, things aren't much better. As his final trial, he is led to a dark chamber guarded by two men in armor, where he is told that he will be tested with fire and water, and that these tests could very well prove fatal. He, re he announces himself prepared to face anything they may throw at him, and just as he does so, he hears Pamina's voice. And it turns out that Pamina and Tamino will undergo the trials together. In fact, Pamina will lead Tamino through the trials, and together they will triumph. We want to sing for you now one of the most sublime things in the whole opera, the quartet of the two armed men, the armored men, we could say, and Tamino and Pamina. 
Uh, it's a little bit of sacred music in the midst of this opera, a little bit of a Mozart mass with just exquisite, exquisite counterpoint. Here as the two armored men are Matt Pierce and bass Samuel Weiser.
and with the power of music's might, you will be glad to know that they make it through the trials of fire and water, and they are welcomed into the temple and into the brotherhood. But what about Papageno? Still out looking for Papageno, and he's in trouble because he actually met Papageno in disguise, but he broke his vow of silence to talk to her. And now she's been spirited away forever, so he thinks, and he doesn't know what to do. In fact, he's thinking of hanging himself. Let's hear a little bit of the Act Two finale uh, with Samson McCready as Papageno. Splendid wine. Why did I meet that girl of mine? They lit a fire within my heart, driving me here, driving me there. Papa Gaina, are you near me? Papa Gaina, can you hear me? It's no use, she'll never find me. I must leave this world behind me. All my searching is in vain. Let me end my life of pain. Here's a rope myself I'll strangle. Here's a branch from that I'll tangle. I'm denied my heart's delight, so I'll bid this world good night. Evil world, I'm badly treated. All my hopes of love defeated. I've had enough, and now I'll die. Lovely maiden, say goodbye. Lovely maiden, say goodbye. But it's not too late to save me. If some other maid will have me, let me try before I go. Say the word, say yes or no. Say the word, say yes or no. No one hears me. All are silent. Not a voice replying. They prefer to see me dying. Papa Gain or tie the rope. I can tell there's no more hope. Papa Gain or tie the rope. I can tell there's no more hope. Wait, there's still a chance. Could be, there's still a chance. Yes, let's see. Till I've counted one, two, three. One. Two. Now, I promise we won't leave you there. <laughs> but before we conclude tonight's performance, I want to tell you about two things in the upcoming Washington National Opera season. First of all, our season oper opener is Verdi's Otello, opening this Saturday night, a spectacular piece based on 
uh, Shakespeare's Othello starring Russell Thomas and Leo Crocetto and Georgia Didze. A, a spectacular cast, a spectacular work. Also, if you enjoyed seeing these performers in the Magic Flute, not only can you see nine performances between the 2nd and the 23rd of November, but on the 22nd of November, you can see our annual Young Artist Performance featuring all the artists up here. And now, it's a happy opera. You will be pleased to know that the three spirits who have been Papageno's friends all along come in and tell him that if he doesn't need to hang himself. All he needs to do is use the magic bells they gave him, which he has quite forgotten. And when he rings those magic bells, suddenly appears what the gods have set aside for him all this time and what he's always dreamed of, a girl just like him, a girl named Papagena. And she's so beautiful and he's so overwhelmed that at the beginning, all they can do is stutter, pa, 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 pa. Here, as Papagena, in a uh, change uh, from her previous role, is Alexandra Novakovsky, and back as Papageno is Samson McCready at the piano. Thomas Morris, here's the final duet for Papageno and Papagena. Thank you for joining us at the Millennium Stage. Please enjoy the rest of your evening at the Kennedy Center. <laughs> 